everybody, my name is Richard Lee and I run the stockweather.com.au website. Uh, welcome to a series of educational videos designed to help members uh, understand exactly how I work and how to maximise the website as a resource. And for those that aren't members, perhaps learn a little bit about how I work uh, and how I run the website. So today I want to talk to you about my trading, my trade process, with, especially with regard to the stop loss and the protect profit process that I use. Okay, firstly... A fairly simple uh, website, uh, a fairly simple model. Uh, my entries next, it's a, my entries are only twofold: a trend reversal, which is a very common uh, trading pattern from the lows, or a new high in price. Okay, my exits are done purely by money management, which is a trailing stop. So my analysis is what gets me into a trade, but once I'm into a trade, it then money management takes over and manages the trade on a, on a money management basis. All entries uh, have to be confirmed by work. A TIR, which you can see there, which is my trend intensity rating system, which helps me confirm the validity of these entries. Okay, execution of the trades. Once I've got the signals, how do I execute them? So all model signals are, uh, are triggered by Friday's close. I'm a weekly model. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but I'm a weekly model, so I only focus on Friday's end of week close. Okay, so I look at the entry trigger for new highs and trend reversals, where, where, where that is against the, the, the weekly close, and if the, the stocks that are already entered, I look at the stop loss to protect profit level against the close to see whether they'll be triggered or not. So I'm going to show you how the execution goes in a moment. All trades, I usually execute around 11 o'clock. Um, I try and avoid the opening price because that can be quite a volatile time when the stock market opens, so I usually suggest to members they might want to look at uh, trading and doing their trades at around 11 o'clock when the market settled down a bit. So the execution, so I'm going to show you here is a snapshot of one of the 16 tables that I have. I have 16 different sectors set up. Um, now in this table here, I've just got a snapshot of about eight stocks here or six stocks here uh, out of a possible 20 stocks. I'm not showing them all. I'm just showing you some, some current stock picks and some non-stock picks so you can see how the table works. Okay, so firstly, this is all from my trading center. APT. Here's a little chart logo here, and if you're on the website, you can click on a chart. This is a trend intensity rating, which is quite strong at trend at uh, 9 out of 10. Yes, it is a stock pick. You can see the entry date, which is the 18th of May. The entry price, $42.36, and the current price is $70.31, which is showing a current unrealized profit of $29.95, or 70%. Okay, now this column here is the important column. This is where I have my, my, my stop losses or my protect profits and my entry triggers. In the case of a current stock pick, I'm either stopping a loss or protecting a profit. In the case of APT, the stop loss level or the protect profit level is above, is above the entry price, so I'm protecting a profit and my profit levels are $65, my current price is $72.31. That rose last week from, I don't know where, say $63 to $65. So I'm currently locking in profits all the time. I'm always protecting more and more profit. I never move these stops down. I'm always moving them up all the time. So that's how Protect Profit works. The next column here is a is Appen. Chart, 9 out of 10. You can see it entered. It is a stock pick. It entered on the 22nd of June at $33.91. Current price is $36.41. So I do have an unrealized profit of $2.50 or 7%. But my stop loss is still below my entry price. Okay, so this is still below the entry price. So this shows in red. So I'm stopping a loss here. In the case of that, after pay, I'm protecting a profit. So here I'm stopping a loss. The arrow signifies whether it went up or down, or it never, never goes down, whether it went up last week. So it's up from last week, which is a good sign. If we go to the next one, we've got next DC. Okay, you can see when I entered that, it's yes, it's a stock pick. I entered in January at $7.16. Current price is $11.41. My current unrealized profit is $4.25 or 59%, but my current stop is protecting a profit from $7.16 to $9.70 at the month. So that's where my stop is at the moment for XDC. So this column is a fairly important column. It tells you where my stops are. For non-stock picks, stocks that haven't qualified as a stock pick, they will be in green if they're, if they're qualified. This is grey or red. So technology one, it's a minus one out of, out of 10 to plus, plus 10 to minus 10. Uh, it exited on the 22nd of June at $8.85. As it's in red, it would have been a small loss. Uh, the current price is $8.74. If I were to re-enter this stock, it would have to go above $10.25 for me to re-enter it. The same with Altium. $42 is its entry trigger. 
and Bravara Solutions, its entry trigger is $6.10 and the current price is $4.56. So all these are still below their entry triggers and will not be stock picks. So at the end of every week, I'm comparing this current price with the entry trigger price to see whether it's an exit through the words an entry next week. Same thing with, that, with APT, I'm comparing this price against this price. If this goes below here, then I'll exit this stock here. So this column is a very, very important column. It shows you where your stop loss is in the case of Appen, or a protect profit in the case of Afterpay and Next DC, or the entry trigger in the case of Technology One, Altium and Bravara Solutions. So that's how that column works. This is a very, very important column and the one that I will key, look at every week and change every week. Okay, so that's execution. Timing and benchmarks. Okay, Stockwater entrance, entries and exits are all benchmarked against Monday's opening price because that's when I do my executions for the purpose of, of uh, showing my returns. Okay, all entries and exits are done at market. I don't tend to try and finesse stocks. All the stocks that I cover are liquid stocks within the ASX 200. If you put an order on, you should get filled pretty well immediately. If you want to put a bit of a limit on a stock, if you're buying a stock a little bit above, or if you're selling a stock a little bit below, just to make sure, that's fine. But be careful you don't finesse too much. As I said before, all executions should be done around about 11 o'clock on a Monday. Okay. As I said before, it's a weekly model, so stock weighted does not base decisions on daily data. So I'm not interested in what happens during the week. Daily data can go up and down, but invariably the weekly close, well, the weekly close is what I use to confirm my, my entries or exits. So the daily stock alerts you receive as a member during the week are really just warnings to you that I know that levels are being tested, but we'll have to wait till the end of the week to see if there's confirmation of a break, of a, of a stop or a break of a, uh, a reversal level. These can be switched off under my account if you want to switch them off and don't want to receive them. Uh, L entries and exits are, are not confirmed until Friday's weekly close. Okay, Stops that I use are never on the market. The market is closed between my decision making time and the execution time. So I'm making my decisions on Friday when the, with the weekly data close. The Friday close, I look at the price, I look at the entry trigger, I look at the stop loss. Has it been triggered or not? If it's been triggered, I they will then execute on Monday morning. So the market is never open, I never have stops on the market, I'm never making decisions when the market is open. It's a weekly process. This is very important that you understand this. The weekly perspective, why do we use it? Well, it's designed to take the anxiety out of trading and, and help maintain a rational and prudent perspective. Okay, uh, weekly trading is still highly profitable. Um, I always think the longer the, t the the shorter the time frame, the faster you lose your money. So I look at the weekly trading model. It avoids daily noise. It keeps me relaxed and composed, and I can make some good decisions rather than being caught up in the emotions of the day. So no decisions are ever made on the fly. They're always predetermined. Friday's close. I make the decision. On Monday, I execute. So the weekly perspective is a very very useful perspective. Okay, now size matters. Now, with Stock Radar, I don't tell you how much to trade or what to trade. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't do any of that sort of stuff. I only send entries and exits based on my trading models, okay? But I can give you a guide just to give you an understanding of how to ma help manage your risk a little bit. So I have a tr if I have an, a capital allocation of, say, $100,000 and I want to trade 10 stocks, I'll divide that $100,000 by 10, and that gives me a trade size of about $10,000 for every stock. Okay, so that keeps, keeps, my, keeps my risk managed. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not putting $60,000 into one stock when I've got $100,000, or I'm not putting $1,000 into a stock when I've got $100,000, because that's too small. So it just gives me a good balance and helps me manage my risk, which I'm going to show you a bit more about in a second. So capital allocation of $100,000, if you want to trade 10 stocks, I would divide it by about 10, and that gives you a rough guide as to the sort of size you should be trading. Okay, now stop loss and protect profit. What's your, what's your risk? Now we all need to manage our risk and what I try and do is I try and keep my risk, my portfolio risk uh, to 1.5% on any one trade. And how do I do that? Okay, so if I've got a $100,000 portfolio and I'm trading $10,000 each, each stock for each trade, okay, my stop will be 15% of that $10,000, which is $1,500, which is 1.5% 1 of my $100,000 portfolio size. Okay, so on any one trade, I'm never risking any, any more than 1.5% of my portfolio size on any one trade. Okay, now with my stops, they always lifted as price rises, they always lifted as you saw before in the trading uh, center, center table. I'm always trying to protect my profit and I never want to let that profit escape like it can happen. 
and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But so I'm always lifting my stop and I never move my stops down. So from a starting point of 15% risk, my stop never goes down, which limits my risk um, on any one trade. Okay, that's just a little bit about the trade process, um, how my stop loss and stop profits work. If you do have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email or even give me a call. I'm always available. Thanks very much.